In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can make sweaty skin. We'll do this in two steps. First, we'll do the easy thing and make the skin shiny to give a basic wet appearance. Second, we'll put the actual beads of sweat on the skin using geometry nodes. So here I have our scene and you can see our character is bald and there's no hair. The only reason I'm doing this is because to render the hair would take too much time and make this presentation pretty laggy. So we're going to work with her bald for now. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started on that first step where uh, we want to make the base skin shinier. So I'm going to select the mesh and which is already at the skin material. As you can see, there's nothing fancy about this, just a color, roughness, and a normal map. And that's basically it. So there is some subsurface scattering over here, but uh, let's ignore that for now. And uh, let's go ahead and focus on the roughness here. Um, so I'm just going to add a color ramp. And that's going to allow me to basically, I, I would use the term bump up the shininess, but kind of bump up the shininess, but bump down the values. So all I'm going to do is take the lower values from the texture map, from the skin, from the roughness map, and then I'm going to apply, I'm going to basically clip that to black. I'm going to map that to black. And as you can see, as I move all the way around, new about three point some three point three. Now the skin's much shinier, right? So versus if I just use the roughness map. Right, much um, much more matte, I guess you would call it. Um, so Control-Z that, and then so this will be our base skin layer. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is make the beads of sweat, which we'll place along the surface of the body. So we're just gonna go ahead and get out of the render mode. Um, and I was just gonna hide the body and the clothes. And uh, what we wanna do is uh, we wanna you know, add a basic object. So we'll just do something like a cube. And I'm going to scale this down quite a bit. And I'll have to change this also later. I'm not going to get the scale perfectly. Do something like this. And then I'm going to add a modifier over here. I'm going to do a subdivision to give it, you know, a more a rounder shape. And let's just bump that up to something like, you know, the lowest viewport is two to match the render. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this by um, manipulating the vertices of the cube. So if I if we imagine what a you know what a drop of sweat would look like, I'm just gonna try to estimate that. I'm just gonna kind of you know hold on, gotta get to be able to select the whole thing, the whole bottom, something like this. I'm gonna grab it, some something like that, and then um, maybe move this up a little more, make it a little flatter, and then grab it back down the center. And then I'm gonna, so that, that's one dimension. And then here we'll be able to do some more manipulation to just give it a little more, you know, kind of weird drop kind of shape, something kind of like that, right? And then we can maybe something like this, and then maybe that. So we have a basic shape here, right? And I'm gonna do one last thing because I really like making the, um, the top stick out more, make it more rounded. So something like this, that'll catch the lighting much better. And then I think I'm gonna do one last thing, which is grab that up and then grab Z just so we can align it well, and then more or less center it. And then this will be one of our shapes for, um, for a sweat bead. Um, so I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to go ahead and create the rest of them and then uh, we'll come back. All right, so I've uh, went off and created some sweat shapes. So you can see I have something like that. And let me get out of transparency mode. I have something like that and something a little more angled and then finally kind of a chunkier um, sweat shape. So what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and enable the visib visibility of all of them. I'm going to actually add them to a collection. And we'll just call this sweat shapes. And the reason I'm going to add, uh, the reason I'm adding these to a collection is because I'm going to want to be able to use this collection inside uh, geometry nodes. So I'm going to have geometry nodes pick any of these three at any given time with some random value, for example. And then I'll be able to place these randomly on the skin of the character. All right, now that we have our sweat shapes done, um, let's go ahead and start with our geometry nodes. So I have the mesh selected, and I'm going to go to modifiers, add modifier, and then geometry nodes. I'm going to put this before the collision. I don't think it really matters, but just do that anyways. 
All right, then we create new, and now we have our basic geometry node set up. Okay, so our first task is we want to tell geometry nodes where we want the sweat shapes to be placed on the body. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do shift A and then search for points. And we want to have distribute points on faces. And as you see, all of a sudden there are points where along the mesh, but you can no longer see the mesh, right? So these points will define, we'll replace these points with the sweat shapes eventually. Okay, but we need to get the body back because if we leave it like this, we're not gonna be able to see, we're just gonna see some random like uh, sweat shapes and we're not gonna see the body. So in order to do that, do uh, shift A, search, I think it's join geometry. We add that node. I'm just gonna place that out there. I'm not gonna join that. I mean, fill that quite yet. So we're gonna pipe the points to it. Then we pipe the output into the final output of the geometry. Okay, so it still has points. Um, but note, note this oblong shape, this kind of more rectangular shape, whereas everything else is mostly circles. This shape means you can take in multiple inputs. So our original body is actually this geometry right here. We're just gonna come over here and there we go. Now we have the body with some points um, and we're, we'll work on that in, you know, we'll work on getting that um, fixed up. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is so for this tutorial, um, I'm not going to have sweat on the body, even though it does work on the body. I really want to focus on the face. That's a lot easier to work with. I mean, a lot easier to demonstrate what's going on. And so the question is, how do we isolate, you know, the points from such that such that they're only going to be placed on the face? So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to edit mode on the body and um, ignore that I had that selected. <laughs> so, okay. So what I'm going to do is actually create a vertex group. Now I'm going to call this sweat vertex group. Okay. And then I'm going to select just the face and a little bit of the neck, but you can obviously, if you want to get rid of the neck, just make sure I have everything there mostly, even though the back doesn't matter. Um, you know, I could get rid of the neck parts here and then, you know, but for the sake of the, you don't want to see me, you know, do unselecting right now. Um, and then I'm just going to apply. So I have a weight at one and I'm just going to apply that to the um, face and a little bit of the neck. So now the vertex group is basically zero everywhere except for what I have selected here. Okay. So let's tab out of that. Let's go back into um, not x-ray mode and then now, obviously nothing has changed because I, all I did was create a vertex group. Okay, now how do I use that vertex group? So I'm gonna come, come down to my distribute points on faces and just drag the selection up over here. And then this is gonna create an input and I can rename the input. I'm actually going to rename the input to you know sweat vertex group. So now this gives us an input that we can apply and pipe to the, to the distribute points on faces. So let's go to our modifier and we're gonna go ahead and you can now see that the input is here and named correctly. So we're gonna hit this little, I don't know what this thing is called, a cross or something like that. And then we're gonna type in, um, you know, sweat vertex group. And there we go. So now the points are no longer distributed on the body and they're only distributed on the face. So this, this shows how you can control um, what receives sweat and what doesn't. So now if we wanna just bump up the density, it's like, okay, cool, now, I don't know what that looks like, um, but you get the point. Um, now, now the face is the only thing that's receiving it. Right. So the next thing we want to do is actually replace the points with the sweat shapes that we have. So um, the first thing we need to do is be able to convert the points to meshes. So I'm going to hit shift, sorry, shift A, search, we do instances and we want instance on points. I'm going to put that right there. Okay, and I'm gonna remove the points from the join geometry. So this, we're gonna pipe the points from the distribute points on faces to instance on points. So it, what it's gonna do is gonna take those points and then it can, we can give this node some uh, meshes and then it'll replace those points with those meshes. So the output here will be meshes. And so we're just gonna pipe that into the um, join geometry. Okay, cool. Um, so I have the points piped in, but I don't have any meshes. We're not, so we need to pipe something into the instance here. So let's go all the way back to, uh, remember we had that sweat shapes collection up here. 
Okay, how do we reference that and pipe that into the instance on points? Shift A, search, collection, info. All right, let me move up a bit. Okay, now this is gonna represent our collection and here's where we type in our collection. So we'll type in sweat shapes and then we're gonna put that into instance and you can see it's all messed up. Um, it's not getting different instances of the meshes. It's putting all three shapes that we have and putting it all into each every single point, right? Okay, so how do we fix that? All right, so first click on pick instance and then we're gonna, we need to fill in the instant in instance index. And the way we're gonna do that is use a random value. So shift A, search, random value. Okay, and change this to integer. So we get whole numbers of zero, one, two, um, non, non-fractional numbers. All right, so we're gonna put that into the instance index. Cool, now how do we figure out the min and max here? Well, we have three shapes, two, three. Zero is gonna map to the first one, one's gonna map to the second, and then two will map to the third. Okay, so let's go back here. So, okay, zero, the minimum value is zero. If we had negative one, that wouldn't make any sense because negative one doesn't actually map to anything. But the max is 100, that doesn't make any sense. So let's do two. So this random value will generate zero, one, or two for any, at any given instance, right? Okay, um, but that didn't fix it. Okay, to fix it, hit separate children. Okay, now you can see we have different shapes at the point. So like this, this shape is clearly different from this one and it's clearly different from this one. So we've gotten that all separated out and um, we're good there. Now they're too big. Right, so we're gonna just kind of do this a bit hacky. Instead of actually going back to the sweat shape and scaling it, um, we're just gonna apply the scale on um, the instance on points. And we do something like 0 0.0, maybe 0 0.02. Okay, that's way too small. Um, let's do about 0 0.23. Okay, that's a little better. Actually, that's a lot better. Okay, so now you can see mostly what, what, we're, what we have here now. And it still doesn't look that great. Um, but let's go ahead and just pump up the density a bit just so you can kind of see you know what this will end up end up you know where we're going here